Hi everyone. It's a cold winter morning here in Melbourne. Um, I just thought I'll quickly make this video and respond to one of the videos that one of the group members actually posted in the group regarding uh, this uh, property expert talking down the property market that there's a crash coming and so on and all that. I've got a few things to say about it. <clears throat> the first thing is um, he's an economist or he's a property expert or whatever. He's like a white collar property expert. And um, if these people have one of their predictions that come true or whatever, they are well regarded in their industry and so on. So, and I'll give you, I'm not, say, I'm not just saying that, I don't know who this guy is, what his qualification is and so on. I'm, I'm, apparently he's really good and uh, yeah, all, um, all good with that, uh, no disrespect. However, in 2012, when I was starting out, I went to a seminar, a free seminar, where they had called in an economist for some big company or whatever, and he was a legit economist. And he talked down Melbourne at the time just as much as this guy is talking down uh, the property market at the moment. Uh, he said there were 25,000 apartments coming out in, the, in Melbourne CBD and there's going to be a ripple effect. Exactly the same was it's like both of these guys went to the same uni or read from the same textbook. Because he's, he used the same words to describe what this guy is describing um, in the video. So that's one thing. He said exactly the same thing. And that was uh, in mid-2012 when I went to the seminar. And I knew nothing about property. And I was saying, uh, wow, it's, you know, I live in Melbourne. There are no opportunities here because, um, because I'm in Melbourne. And uh, Melbourne, everyone's talking down Melbourne. So um, I shouldn't be doing anything. And at the same time, the same seminar was actually promoting going to uh, going and getting cash flow positive properties in mining towns and um, we all know what happened there so and we all know what happened in Melbourne in 2013 14 and 15 and still uh, last last weekend I think the auction clearance rate in Melbourne was about 74 percent but having said that I'm not I'm not trying to discount what he said what I wanted to stress upon was that yes there is going to be a glut of apartments because they are but you've got to realize Australia only has a population of 24 million people and <clears throat> Australia relies heavily on immigrants coming in um, and and increasing the population if you've studied economics you understand an economy can only grow if there is consumerism if there are people who consume if people sit on their wallets they will they, that economy will go into depression and that's exactly what happened in Japan so you've got to make sure that people need to spend money in order for the economy to grow. And what happens with people like him talking on the TV and trying to get their brownie points, um, <clears throat> it, it, it sends a negative vibe in the market and everybody slows down. You, if you realize there's no mining happening at the moment because mining is, uh, has gone down for whatever reason, um, only in the interim, I still think Australia's got a huge, massive mining potential and it will come back again. Um, second, uh, there's no manufacturing happening in Australia anymore. So um, it's only the property market. It's only the property market that is actually propping the economy up. And, and the banks realize that and the government realizes that. So <clears throat> don't let these negative reports deter you from what you need to do always do your research i'm not saying just jump anywhere and start developing apartments my, I'm, i'll be the i'm the last advocate of doing apartments in fact my no money down deal was 16 apartments i was in 16 apartments i've just sold the project and i'm getting into a 12 townhouse project so i'm <clears throat> distancing myself from apartments as well and although my my location was fantastic it had a 98 <clears throat> percent walk score and so on so don't let these people deter you from doing your research or doing your homework to make sure where you're going. I never do any infill, um, I, sorry, I never do any uh, developments in the outskirts uh, of uh, Melbourne or Brisbane for that matter. I only pick up uh, areas that are well established, have proper public transport, have proper schools, there are activity centers close by. And uh, if you do these and you do your numbers right, you do a full scale financial feasibility and you also do a fire sale scenario. 
every project I do, I do a for fire sale scenario where if everything went south, what is my out and what is the what is the lo- least that I could get from it? And if I am still in the green, that is the only time I would do this project. Because if I know that, you know, if the like for example, these twelve townhouses that I'm doing now, there's one up the road from us, and they're selling their three bedroom, uh, two bathroom townhouses start from six ninety nine uh, onwards. I did my feasibility for this project at six thirty. And I know that mines are going to be better because I know they are bigger in size. Uh, they are less in quantity. He's, uh, this guy is doing, I don't know, 20 tanas is from us and I'm doing 12. So I did my feasibility on 630 and we were happy with what we were going to get with 630. And that's the only time I'm actually moving forward with this project. So, um, and um, and finally, I would like to find out how many properties does this guy actually own? How many developments has he done himself? Um, because uh, you could be a white collar expert who's read all the right books, uh, all has done all of that, but has got zero knowledge on the ground, like zero. He's never been on the ground because all he's done is negatively gear and buy something and sit on it for a long time. So if you are a developer and you know how you're doing this, first three years, yes, it's harder until your first couple of projects turn over and all that. But um, after that, you know how it works. It just becomes... Uh, second nature to you how things will unfold uh, what's required then and you become that much astute so don't let these people bog you down Uh, do your research I'm not saying jump into something without knowing much about something uh, or about a project or about the numbers none of that no shortcuts whatsoever Um, if you if you ever spoke to the builder that I work with there's so many times we get into uh, disagreements and that is only because um, uh, I'm a numbers guy and I need to find a smoking gun to be able to say that look this is this is good and and we keep and we keep tossing these ideas and we keep uh, refining our feasibility and this and I'm um, I'm sort of a conservative guy I mean look the feasibility has got to be right if you're too conservative you kill the deal and if you are too optimistic you shoot yourself in the foot so the numbers got to be really really right and for that um, I mean I, I do them right but I also do them a little a touch on the conservative side that look if there was a bonus that came in a little bit later yeah that'll be great um, my first uh, development, this is going back uh, early 2013 um, and um, this was, no, it was actually the second development but it actually finished before my first development so uh, that's why I called it first development. So um, it was a townhouse project and I had done my feasibility based on a GRV of 580,000 and but because I had done my research and selected my area so carefully that by the time we were done with this and we were about to sell them they sold for 630,000 so not 580 630 even at 580 we would have made good money there's no problem there's nothing uh, wrong with that but I, I didn't put in 630 or 600 at the time I did the numbers on 580 so um, Um, I wish everybody all the very best and make sure you do your homework, make sure you do your research and if you've got any questions, post them in the the group. Take care. Bye-bye.